Hey everyone, welcome to the Muscle Research Blog. Today I would like to offer some commentary on an article that I recently shared called Running Makes You Fat. This article appeared on the website T Nation a couple weeks ago and was written by Chris Sugar. Now the title alone, Running Makes You Fat, is sure to draw some criticism and create a little controversy. So I thought I would just break down the article specifically and look at what exactly he was talking about and what does that title actually mean. So the article I shared references a study from 2006 titled, The Effects of Changing Exercise Levels on Weight and Age-Related Weight Gain. This study looked at over 12,000 runners across a nine-year time period and collected data via surveys. The specific data that was collected involved average weekly running mileage, BMI, which is a measurement of your body weight compared to your height, and waist circumference. So again, this was over a nine year time period, over 12,000 runners, a pretty large sample size. But it's survey data, there wasn't actually measurements taken, and it is worth noting that there was no nutritional data collected during this. So the results were you know, pretty plentiful, but one of the things that really stands out to me is the fact that the only runners who did not see a significant increase in their BMI and waist circumferences were those who significantly increased their weekly mileage over the course of the nine-year time period. Some of them increased their mileage up to threefold. Even runners who ran 40 plus miles per week still had a slight weight gain. So these results are very interesting. What explains them? That is the big question that I have, and I'm sure that you have as well. And I can summarize it by one word, and that word is efficiency. One of the major adaptations that the human body has to aerobic exercise is increased efficiency. So specifically, the aerobic energy system, which is the system that is used during moderate to low intensity aerobic exercise, is an efficient energy system. And training that system makes it even more efficient as opposed to the anaerobic energy system, which is what we use to fuel high intensity contraction, it is a very inefficient energy system. So what does that actually mean? I like to use the analogy of an automobile. So if we think about a car that gets good gas mileage, it's going to burn a low amount of fuel but cover a lot of distance, okay? That would be the aerobic energy system. Now on the other hand, if you had an inefficient car, one that had poor gas mileage, this car would not cover very much distance but it would burn a lot of fuel. Now, from an automobile perspective, obviously you want to have the car that's more efficient, you want to have the car with good gas mileage. But, what if we're thinking in terms of fat loss, or not even fat loss, but what about maintenance of your body weight? Would you rather utilize an energy system that burns a low amount of calories and takes a long period of time, or would you rather utilize an energy system that burns a lot of fuel in a short period of time? Personally, if I'm trying to maintain my weight or lose body fat, or even like I said, maintain my weight, I would want to choose the system that burns a lot of fuel in a short amount of time or covers a short amount of distance. So the article again titled Running Makes You Fat, it's a little bit of a sensationalist title, but from the perspective of fat loss, it is clear by looking at you know, the efficiency of these energy systems, you're gonna get a lot more bang for your buck if you utilize high intensity exercise to, to burn body fat or even to maintain your weight. If you like running, then run. But if you're looking to simply maintain your body weight or even reduce your fat mass, I would recommend some high intensity interval training and strength training to accomplish that. So thanks for watching this blog post. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. If you have any questions or comments, you can post them below or email me. And I just hope that you have a great day. Thanks again. Take care.